In September 2007, the Royal Marines of 40 Commando deployed as part of the 52nd Brigade to Helmand Province in southern Afghanistan. The deployment of 40 Commando was an interesting one, mainly because the Marines had only just finished their rotation into the country in April of that year. However, as the unofficial history of Operation Herrick states, the lack of Army infantry units meant that Marine Battalion had to be borrowed to take 52nd Brigade to full strength. Consequently, for the second time in six months, Royal Marines were on the ground again in Helmand Province, with 40 Commando focusing its operations in the northern regions, namely around the areas of Kajaki, Sangin and Nauzad. To the south of Sangin was Forward Operating Base Robinson, where elements of 40 Commando's reconnaissance force was garrisoned. Commenting on the situation around the FOB, a report states, Forward Operating Base Robinson had been targeted relentlessly by the enemy. Complex and highly effective improvised explosive devices had been deployed by the Taliban throughout the Forward Operating Base's area of responsibility. Movement around the FOB was fraught with danger and exceptionally high risk for troops, whether vehicle borne or operating on foot. Stationed at the base with a reconnaissance force was Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher who joined the Royal Marines back in November 2000 and had previously served twice in Iraq, including during the invasion of 2003. Five months into his first tour of Afghanistan on the 9th of February 2008, Lance Corporal Croucher and a detachment of Marines were tasked with conducting a reconnaissance of a Taliban-held compound near FOB Robinson, which intelligence suspected was being used as a manufacturing site for IEDs. Setting off in the early morning hours of the 9th of February, the Royal Marines established a position overlooking the compound. However, from this position, the Marines are unable to identify what the compound is being used for, and so the decision was made to send a small team forward to establish if the building was in fact being used to make IEDs. Selected for this mission was Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher and three other Marines, who, utilising their night vision goggles, infiltrated their way to the compound and made a forced entry inside. Although opposition had been expected, the building turned out to be empty, and immediately the team set about gathering anything valuable for intelligence. After 30 minutes on site, the Marines had confirmed that the compound was being used to create IEDs, and with their mission complete, the order was issued for the team to withdraw back to the Overwatch position. Leading this withdrawal was Lance Corporal Croucher, who led the team out from the building and into the courtyard, where, as he recalls, I had night vision goggles, but it was still relatively hard to see. Suddenly I felt a tension below my knee, then I heard the distinctive noise of a fly-off lever ejecting from a hand grenade. In the darkness, I had walked through a four-meter tripwire that led to an old pineapple-style Russian grenade. I knew a grenade like this has a killing circumference of about five meters, Within those precious few seconds, I realised there was nowhere to take cover, and there was certainly no point running because you would catch shrapnel. It was a case of either having four of us as fatalities, or badly wounded, or just one. I thought, I've set this thing off, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to protect the others. In an instant, the Lance Corporal realised what was happening and shouted a grenade to his colleagues, before using his day sack to pin the grenade to the ground, and thrown himself on top. Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher continues, I threw my day sack off one shoulder and onto the grenade, and at the same time dropped to the ground. Then, pulling my legs up, I tucked my head back so my body armour and helmet would make a shield against the inevitable blast. Seconds later, the grenade detonated underneath the Lance Corporal, and in the process, launched him several metres away. Directly behind him, his team leader had dived to the ground on hearing the shout of a grenade, whilst one of the marines had little time to react and was still standing when the grenade exploded. The fourth marine, meanwhile, had managed to retire behind a wall and was in cover during the detonation. 
Lance Corporal Croucher recalls the immediate aftermath. I was lying face down in the dirt. It was total confusion and I was covered in dust. My ears were ringing, my head was spinning, and I had blood coming out my ears and nose. I checked that my arms and legs were still attached and worried about everything else after that. Gathering their bearings in the pitch black, dust filled courtyard, two of the Marines rushed over to the Lance Corporal, checked him over for any wounds, prior to helping him up to his feet. Remarkably, despite throwing himself onto a grenade, Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher had only suffered mild concussion, perforated eardrums, and a few cuts and bruises. His day sack, on the other hand, had been completely ripped apart, and his body armour and helmet had been peppered with shrapnel. Of the other three marines, only the team leader had become a casualty when a piece of fragmentation struck him in the face. This, however, proved to only be a minor injury. Nonetheless, had it not been for the actions of Lance Corporal Croucher, it is certain that at least three of the marines would have either been killed in action or seriously wounded, and it was because of this selfless act of heroism that he was recommended for the Victoria Cross. However, upon reviewing the case, the Ministry of Defence determined that the George Cross, Britain's highest award for acts of gallantry committed while not under enemy fire, would be more appropriate, since the Marines were not in direct combat with the Taliban. A segment of Lance Corporal Matthew Croucher's citation reads, That he was willing to risk all in order to save the lives of his comrades is indisputable. That he possesses an indomitable fighting spirit is abundantly clear. Lance Corporal Croucher is an exceptional and inspirational individual. His magnificent displays of selflessness and gallantry are truly humbling and are the embodiment of the finest traditions of the service.